Hey guys, it's Monica. Welcome to my channel. This is where I give advice to medical students, interns, and residents on how to succeed in medicine. So today I'm going to be giving an example of a good oral presentation on a typical patient with heart failure. So I realized that I have a video on mistakes that are commonly made in oral presentations, but I don't really have a video giving really good examples. So I'm gonna start a series where I give good oral presentations on patients with common diagnoses like AKI, COPD, etc., because I think it's helpful to know what information would be relevant in those cases and what you should emphasize when you give your oral presentation. All right, here we go. Chief complaint is shortness of breath. Miss Y is a 62 year old female with a history of paroxysmal AFib on anticoagulation, rheumatic fever with mitral stenosis, status post balloon valvuloplasty eight months ago at an outside hospital, mild COPD, OSA on CPAP, and hypothyroidism who presents with progressive shortness of breath for two months. So two months ago, she was able to do yard work and she was able to go on a daily two mile walk but then she's gradually had to decrease her activity. So she's no longer able to walk more than a block without stopping to rest. And she's gained about 15 pounds over this same time period. She's also noticed worsening abdominal distension and swelling of both her legs. Her legs feel really tight and she can't walk without feeling significant pain. So today she decided to come to the ER because she woke up with palpitations and they haven't stopped for the last three hours. She denies PND or orthopnea. She uses two pillows to sleep at night, but that's kind of her usual. She denies chest pain, nausea, or diaphoresis. And just of note, two weeks before her symptoms started, her cardiologist has switched her from digoxin to amiodarone, and there's been no change in her diet. She tried using her albuterol inhaler a few times when she felt shorter breath, but it didn't really help. She denies productive cough or wheezing. She denies decreased urination, foamy urine, or swelling of her arms and face. She denies any fever, chills, or malaise, no recent travel. She denies sore throat or rhinorrhea, and she's also been on a stable dose of Synthroid for the last three years. In terms of the ED course, on arrival to the ER, she was found to be in atrial flutter with RVR with heart rate in the 140s. She got metoprolol IV times two and was loaded with IV digoxin, and with that, her heart rate improved to the 90s, but she's still in A flutter. She got Lasix 40 milligrams IV once, and then she was admitted to medicine at that point. Her past medical history was, as I mentioned, in the one-liner, but in addition to that, she also has hypertension and allergic rhinitis. Past surgical history, she had a C-section in 1989. She had the mitral valvuloplasty that I mentioned eight months ago. In terms of medications for her atrial fibrillation, she's on amiodarone and metoprolol and warfarin for anticoagulation. She's on Lasix 20 milligrams daily as needed for leg swelling. For hypertension, she's on lisinopril 5 milligrams daily and for allergic rhinitis, she's on fluticasone nasal spray and a loratadine daily. For her mild COPD, she's on albuterol inhaler as needed. And for her hypothyroidism, she's on Synthroid 75 micrograms daily. In terms of allergies, she gets hives with Keflex. For family history, her father had heart disease, her mother had breast cancer. For social history, she works as a history teacher. She lives in a house with her husband and her 13-year-old son. She's independent in her ADLs and IADLs. She ambulates without assistance, never smoker, no alcohol use, no recreational drug use. On physical exam, she was a febrile, heart rate was 84, blood pressure 134 over 78, oxygen saturation was 97% on room air. In general, she's in no apparent distress. She was very alert and conversant. Her head and neck exam was notable for a JVP that was elevated at 11 centimeters. In terms of cardiac exam, she had a normal rate, but an, irregu an irregularly irregular rhythm. A three out of six holosystolic murmur that was heard throughout the percordium, but loud at the apex. No rubs or gallops. For her lung exam, she had decreased breath sounds over the right lung base, bypass or crackles, and no wheezing. For her abdominal exam, she was soft, non-distended, non-tender to palpation. For extremities, she had two plus pinning edema in the bilateral lower extremities up to the thighs and two plus distal pulses. And I didn't note any rashes. For her labs, her CBC shows a white count of 6.3, hemoglobin 11.6, her baseline's about 12, platelets 238, her BMP is notable for a slightly low sodium at 133, a BUN elevated at 32, and creatinine at 1.6 and her baseline's about one. Her LFTs were all within normal limits. Her BNP was 1,321, and we don't have any prior BNPs for her. 
Protroponin was negative times two, procalcitonin was less than 0.1, and her INR was 2.1. They also sent a urine sample that was negative for blood, protein, luke esterase, luke esterase, and nitrites. They got urine lights and the pheno was calculated as 0.2%. In terms of imaging, the ER got a chest x-ray. So that showed an enlarged cardiomyocytal silhouette, moderate pulmonary edema, bilateral patchy opacities at the base of the lungs, moderate bilateral pleural effusions with right greater than left, no pneumothorax. In terms of the EKG, so per my read, it's at a rate of 122. She's in A flutter with variable block, normal axis, no SC segment changes, T wave inversions, or Q waves. And we don't have any TTEs available in our system. So in terms of assessment plan, Ms. Wise are a 62-year-old female with a history of paroxysmal AFib on anticoagulation, rheumatic fever with mitral stenosis, status post a balloon valvuloplasty eight months ago, mild COPD, OSA on CPAP, and hypothyroidism, who's coming in with progressive shortness of breath, decreased exercise tolerance, bilateral leg swelling, and a 15 pound weight gain over two months. Found to have a flutter with RVR, physical exam findings consistent with volume overload, elevated BNP and vascular congestion on chest x-ray, altogether concerning for acute to compensate heart failure. So in terms of her heart failure, I think that possible underlying causes could be tachycardia induced since she does have the underlying A flutter versus a valvulopathy, specifically mitral stenosis, since she does have that history of mitral stenosis and required balloon valvuloplasty in the past. I'm not concerned for ACS because she doesn't have any chest pain, her troponin's negative, and she doesn't have any ischemic changes on EKG. She doesn't have any symptoms concerning for infection, so I'm not really concerned for pneumonia and her procalcitonin was negative. I don't think COPD exacerbation, despite her history of COPD, because she doesn't have a protective cough or wheezing, and I just know that she has mild severity of her COPD at baseline. I thought about PE, but she's saturating well in room air, and she's low risk based on the well score, and I have a better explanation for her shortness of breath than a PE. So in terms of the plan, we're going to get a TTE to evaluate the EF and the valves, and for diuresis, we're going to spot dose her with Lasix 20 milligrams IV, which is double her home dose, with a goal INO of net negative one, one to two liters. For monitoring, we're gonna do strict eyes and nose, daily standing weights, and we'll keep her on telemetry. And while we're diuresing her, we'll do, check her BMP twice a day. For her valvular A flutter with RBR with variable block, so this is confirmed on EKG. In terms of risk factors for why should we get A flutter, that includes initiation of amiodarone, CHF, and OSA and also on the differential thyroid toxicosis, but it's unlikely given her stable dose for the last few years, and I confirmed on history that she's taking the medication correctly, and she doesn't have any other concerning symptoms for thyroid toxicosis. And of note, her chest fast is two for gender and heart failure. So we'll check a TSH just to make sure that it's stable. We'll stop her amiodarone because it doesn't look like it was working and she might have amiodarone intolerance. We'll start digoxin, 0.125 milligrams daily. We'll continue that because it worked well for her in the ER. We'll continue metope tartrate, 100 milligrams BID. We'll consult cardiology in case she'll benefit from a cardioversion. In the meantime, we're continuing her warfarin for anticoagulation and we're managing her heart failure as a possible underlying cause. For her AKI, her urine lights were consistent with a pre-renal etiology, most likely cardiorenal syndrome, given that she has acute decompensated heart failure. So for treatment, we're gonna diurese, as I mentioned. We'll hold her lisinopril, and again, we're gonna trend her BMP twice a day. For her chronic issues, for a history of rheumatic fever, history of mitral stenosis, status post balloon valvuloplasty, we're gonna get a TTE, as I mentioned, and we'll continue her metoprolol. For COPD, we're gonna continue her albuterol inhaler as needed for wheezing. For OSA on CPAP, we'll continue CPAP while inpatient. For her hypothyroidism, we'll check her TSH, but in the meantime, continue her Synthroid 75 micrograms daily. For allergic rhinitis, we're actually gonna hold her loratadine and flonase because she hasn't really been needing it, so she hasn't been taking it at home. For inpatient checklist, she's on a low sodium diet. For DVT prophylaxis, she's already on warfarin. For GI prophylaxis, that's not indicated. Her code status, full code, and dispo, likely home pending treatment of her heart failure with transition to oral diuretics, and rate control, possibly rhythm control of her atrial flutter.